Hi, I'm John Harris from Springfield, Illinois. I'm 34 years old. I'm a housewife. My husband works in the restaurant business. I sit at home and raise our children. We have three of them. Six years ago, I worked at the Foundation for Children in Disadvantaged Countries. We worked in Peru. Once, during one of my business trips to Peru, I found myself in a sparsely populated area of Peru near the city of Pulcalpa. We controlled the construction of a school there. A man from Philadelphia donated money to build a school for poor children in Peru. He contacted our organization so that we could control the whole process of construction as it often happens that the allocated money simply disappears or it turns out that for some reason there is not enough of it. So me and two of my male colleagues were engaged in the construction of this school. One day we were invited to participate in a shamanic ritual. There are a lot of shamans in this area of Peru. My colleagues agreed to go, but I didn't, because I'm a Christian, I'm a Catholic. My mother is French and she's a Catholic, so I was baptized as a child. Also, I somehow do not like all these mystical esoteric rituals, all this shamanism. For me, this is all some kind of Satanism. But my colleagues became interested and they went to this shamanic ritual. So they took boats down the river Ukayali, because it all has to happen in a small Indian village. I decided to go with them, and even though I wasn't going to participate in that ritual, I still wanted to go to Silva. Silva is the name of the jungle. I wanted to sit by the fire and listen to the songs, because Peruvian women sing very beautifully. We were in the territory of the Shipibo tribe. It's an ancient Indian tribe. So we all went on boats down the river and stopped in this small village, located right on the shore of Ukayali. Everyone went to the big roundhouse to perform the ritual, and I was left alone on the shore. I was sitting on the beach. It was very, very beautiful. I remember sitting there, smoking a cigarette and looking up at the sky. The sky was full of stars. The stars were bright and even had a sort of magical atmosphere. The whole forest was lit up with such smooth moonlight. The river glistered and flowed like a snake. And there, in the house where the ritual was happening, women started singing. They were singing so beautifully and soulfully, like it was a song about the most important thing in the world. At the same time, it was very, very familiar. That song reminded me of what I had known for a long time, but had long forgotten. It was a feeling like it was my mother singing to me, even though I don't even remember my mother singing to me, but I suddenly felt as if I was a child, as if it was my mother who is no longer alive, as if she sings this song to me. And suddenly, you know, I don't even know how to convey this feeling to you right now, suddenly I felt very, very sad. I did not feel bad, on the contrary, I somehow felt very, very good. Maybe for the first time in my life I felt so good. And on the other hand, I felt very sad, very, very sad. It was such a strong and at the same time light sadness. I started crying. I could not even imagine that I can experience such a bright and beautiful sadness. And then I very clearly realized that I wanted to go home. I can't tell you what happened to me in that minute when I realized that I wanted to go home. My whole body, my soul, my whole I. I suddenly really wanted to go home. But not to Springfield, not to my husband, but home. And then I realized very clearly that I have a home. And that my home is not somewhere in the United States. And that it is not any particular place on earth. That it is somewhere there where I cannot explain to you where. And I was so much drawn to my real home. It was like suddenly I woke up and realized that I was going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. But I somehow forgot about it and got stuck halfway. This discovery shocked me so much. I suddenly realized that because I had forgotten that I was going somewhere, I stopped. I was lost. And now I was found again. It's like I woke up, you know? It was like my mom sent me to the store to get bread and on the way back I met my girlfriends and I forgot that I had to bring the bread home. And here I was, sitting on the shore, when I suddenly remembered that it was time to go home. I clearly saw that the meaning of life is not just to live, to have family, to go to work, to help poor children in Peru, but the meaning of life is to return home. There I realized that I was asleep, and then I woke up. 
and I need to go home. And there I was sitting and crying. I cried because of beauty, grief, and the fact that I have been living on earth for 28 years and haven't even realized that I really need to go home. I didn't have a path, I've lost it. And there, at that moment, I found it again. I found my path. And the path, it's not a philosophical concept or a religion. The path is like your physical, or better to say metaphysical connection with the place where you have to go back. I don't know what this place is. I don't. I just know that this place is my home. And most importantly, I shouldn't forget that I'm on my way home. God, it is so scary not to know that you're on the path. To just live and have no real meaning in life. Because there's only one real meaning in life. To find your path. It's so naive to believe that after death we'll go to heaven or we will reborn or that we will disappear. To just live and believe in some theory. It doesn't matter which one. To just believe and stand still. Because heaven or death, it is just a concept. And the path is when you clearly understand that you are going home. I don't know what my home looks like. I'm a Christian and I believe my home is God, Jesus. But then, while sitting on the bank on this Peruvian river, I realized that God, Jesus, truth or heaven, these are all just words. It still doesn't mean that you are on the path. Because when I woke up, I saw that this path is this narrow road that leads you through all this cold universe. The path is such a physical feeling, as if something is pulling you, as if you are tied by rope and dragged on, like a sheep. The path is not an idea, it's a state. It's a state of such an eternal discomfort in this world, because you understand that every single thing lasts only for a while, that you are leaving it all, and it doesn't concern you because you are going further. You have nothing to do here, your home is elsewhere, you should go. The path is a state of life, in which you remember that you have to constantly move forward. I'm glad to see you, but I have to go. I'm happy to live with you, to celebrate birthdays with you, to be with you by the sea, but I have to go. None of it is mine. I'm not from here. I'm just passing by. The path is sorry, but I must go. I have to get in the boat and keep going. The path is a small river which you are sailing on your small boat. And there are so many inexplicable, terrible, aggressive things around you. I have to sail further and never stop. Otherwise there is a risk that I will once again forget that I need to go home. And now I'm afraid to fall back into the state when I don't know the path. This is the biggest tragedy that can happen to us. And so, I was sitting there on the riverbank, listening to these Peruvian women's songs, and in my heart, right in my heart, the path was opening up. And I really wanted to go home. I understood that this feeling of longing for my real home, longing for the place where I should return, this is the feeling that will remind me of the path. To keep this path, I have to feel a longing in my heart. A constant longing for the place where I have to return sooner or later. This is the thread that connects me and my home. I hold one end of the thread in my hand and the other end goes into the darkness, into the unknown. But I have to follow this thread into this unknown. Because the only thing that I was born for in this world is to come back home. <laughs>